Hello guys, hi everyone, thank you guys for joining me here today. Um, so as most of you guys know, we're here to solve some engineering problems. Um, before we go ahead and get started, let's wait for people to join us. And in the meantime, go ahead and say hi in the chat. Uh, let me know who's here with us today. So you can just go ahead and say hi. And if you're excited to be here, go ahead and say yes in the chat as well. And so we're gonna be solving some uh, common FE problems that you will have on your exam. Uh, so make sure that you guys uh, grab your paper, pen, calculator and get ready to solve with me uh, a problem for today. We're also going to have uh, lives, five lives this week. So the thing is, it's, it's a new year, right? By the way, guys, happy new year. Um, and I wish you guys the best this year. And I wish all of you guys pass your FE exam this year. If let me know in the chat, if your plan is to pass the FE exam in 2023, go ahead and let me know in the chat. I'm seeing a lot of familiar names. I'll say hi in a little bit, but um, I, the reason I wanted to do this live at the beginning of this year, because I always find that the, the beginning is always the hardest, right? And But once you get started, once you start studying, it gets easier and easier. And once you get that momentum, it gets easier along the way. And so I wanna share with you guys these pro problems. We'll solve them together. And then I'm hoping that will give you guys uh, motivation to keep going till you pass your FE exam this year, okay? All right, awesome. Okay, so we have a lot of people excited. A lot of people wanna pass the FE exam this year, 2023. That's amazing. Uh, so we have Ifa. Hi, Ifa. Great to see you. Uh, we have Yemen, we have D, hi D, um, and then we have, uh, let's see, we have Samba, I'm sorry guys if I uh, mispronounce your name, uh, we have Freddy, Eklan, Carlos, hi Carlos, uh, thank you for joining me today, uh, Tanisha, great to see you here, really excited, and uh, let's see, we have Bara, we have Zayed, hi Zayed, uh, I hope you're doing well, I hope this year you pass your FE exam, uh, we have Tina, hi Tina, and then we have Walter, um, and then we have Bar. This is amazing, guys. Awesome. Okay, so um, now remember, guys, make sure that you guys join me this whole week, right? So every week we're going to do a problem from a different subject. Again, we picked these problems because they are really common on the FE exam. You will see them on your FE. And do also, don't forget, guys, to check out our uh, playlist. We have a lot of free FE problems as well that we shared on our YouTube channel, and a lot of them will be on your exam. So make sure to check them out, all right? Okay, guys, awesome. Um, all right, um, we have Joshua. He's not excited to study, but trying to pass this year. Uh, hi, Joe, great to see you. Okay, guys, awesome. Uh, Joshua, I'll talk about that a little bit at the end after we solve the problem. So why don't you guys stick around a little bit and uh, what I want to do in these lives, not just solve problems, but also share with you guys uh, some study tips and just give you some motivation so that you um, you don't give up, right? You don't give up on, on this journey and because it's so important to your career, right? So if you want to excel in your career, getting the EIT is the first step, right? And then you have the PE, right? But we got to make sure that you guys get your FE first so that way you can get your PE and then you can get those promotions and those, you know, or maybe change your job or whatever it is that you want to accomplish. But it's very, if you're an engineer and you want to excel in your career, getting the FE and the PE are very important. Okay, guys? All right, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, let's go ahead. Um, let me go ahead and share guys my screen so that you guys can see it uh let me know also the quality i think the quality of the camera is good because a little bit uh earlier it wasn't it wasn't great so let me know if you guys can see the problem well um let me see here uh let me for some reason it's not showing the full problem okay all right so okay i think i think now i fixed it guys let me know um if you can see it uh well okay and um and I want you guys to be solving this problem with me, okay? So so don't just watch me solve the solution um, or solve the problem. Make sure that you guys, you know, solve it with me. Make sure you have your calculator with you. And then for those of you guys, I'm seeing a lot of our students here, okay? For like, uh, we have Tanisha, we have Carlos, we have Alex. Uh, hi, Alex. Great to see you here. Um, who else we have? We have Ifa. So it's it's great to see you guys here. So may, you guys, we covered these already in statistics and probability, right? So if you already know how to solve this problem, 
go ahead and get started okay um and and once whoever gets the answer let me know in the chat what you got okay now for those of you guys who not familiar with these concepts just follow along with me i'm gonna go over a little bit i'm gonna talk about what's the normal distribution the bell curve when you get a problem what are the steps for analysis so that way it's easy for you guys to tackle these type of problems on the fe exam okay so just follow along and then we're gonna we're gonna solve it together okay so let's go ahead i'm gonna go ahead and read the question here uh so we have a, a calculus a college class has 30 students the final exam score are normally distributed with a mean of 88 percent and a standard deviation of one 0.5 okay so we already have a typo so this should not be uh one percent it should just be 1.5 okay now we want to find the probability that the students will score above 86 percent okay all right so the first thing we guys we need to do is um let's go over some concepts here okay so when you, when you guys get a problem like this it really helps to try to draw the bell curve okay so this is here this is the bell curve or the unit normal distribution curve okay now the way we draw it is this so i'm gonna walk you guys through it so it's at the middle okay right at the middle of the curve where you're gonna have symmetry okay this here it's gonna be zero okay also it represents your mean or your average okay so if we go back to this to the problem here let's let's identify some of the stuff that we are giving so we have the mean right uh so that's the average so that's going to be mu and that's going to be 88 and then you have the standard deviation which is sigma right and that's going to be 1.5 okay now at any point guys if i go too fast or if you don't understand something please let me know in the chat and i'll make sure to clarify it for you guys okay so this year at zero we're gonna have the uh, average right the mean so let's just go ahead and write eight here okay now after the mean what we're gonna have is so let me actually do a different color okay so we're gonna have here one standard deviation here we're gonna have two standard deviation and then here we're gonna have three okay after three we don't really um count we stop at three we just ignore the rest because it's insignificant so we don't count it okay so then after the three standard deviation you're just gonna have positive infinity okay now to the other side now what we're gonna have is minus one standard deviation then we're gonna have minus two standard deviation and we're gonna have minus three standard deviation okay so these are your uh standard units okay again after minus three we stop and then the rest just goes to inf minus infinity okay now the key here is that when you guys get a problem like this what's important is you want to take what's giving to you right and then you want to convert it into the standard units so that you are able to use the tables that are on the reference handbook so let me show you guys so these are the tables that are on the reference handbook they are under the statistics and probability section okay so it's on page 76 on the new reference handbook the latest version make sure that you guys grab that from your ncs account okay so that's the idea is that we want the x value right what is the standard unit so that way we can find the probability um of the students that will score 86 percent okay so now the next step that we need to do is we got to make sure that we convert the values that's giving to us into the standard units okay so but before we go ahead and do that so what i would like to do here is just add the standard deviation and then find what's the standard deviation one two standard deviation two three and so on okay so let's do that so first we're gonna have 88 right and then we're gonna do what we're gonna add to it 1.5 because we were giving a send um the standard deviation of 1.5 okay so that's sigma so then if we do 88 plus 1.5 that's gonna give us 99.5 okay for the second standard deviation you add 1.5 to 99.5 and that's gonna give you guys uh let's see 91 okay and then if we add 1.5 1.5 to 91 we're gonna add 92.5 okay and then we do the same thing to the other side except this time we're gonna do minus okay so if you want to find the minus one standard deviation we're gonna do the take the mean which is 88 minus 1.5 which is the standard deviation and if you guys do that you're gonna get uh 86.5 okay 
and then we do again minus 1.5 you're gonna get here 85 and then here you're gonna get 83.5 okay so these here right these values these scores correspond to these standard units right so now if we take a look at the question that we have we want to find the probability that the students will score above 86 percent right now 86 percent is going to be between these two values right so which means we can't really it's not really send it's not one it's not minus one and it's not minus two right so right now we can't really use the table here right because we haven't find found the value yet we have to find the value right the, the standard unit that corresponds to the 86 percent so that we are able to use the graph that is on the reference handbook okay so that's the first thing the other thing that you guys need to remember is that so when this curve here the area under this curve okay very important the area under this curve represents the probability between two points right or between two scores right so if we're trying to find here the probability that the students will score above let's say 85 right so what we're gonna do is find the area under this curve here right and that area is giving to you guys here on this table okay now the other thing that you guys also need to remember is that the total area under this curve is one okay very important it's always one okay all right so now let's go ahead and find the standard units that represents 86 percent now i'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the chat and see what you guys have been commenting because i was i was just solving the problems let me know again did anybody solve it let me know what you guys got um and then let me know uh what you guys got and then we can go ahead and um and then i can see you guys answer the other thing as well is that who can tell me how we're gonna find the standard unit that corresponds to 86 percent which equation do we need to use right to find the standard unit that corresponds to the 86 percent can anybody tell me which equation do we need to use okay so i'll give you guys a few minutes um again and then i'm gonna show you guys so it's important that you guys write these steps down again this is a common fe question okay so you will have it on the fe so if you write down the steps of exactly how to solve this problem on the fe exam you'll solve it really fast okay all right so now the 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 way to find the standard units for 86 percent we're going to use the z equation okay so i want to show you guys something real quick so if you go to our cheat sheet so by the way guys if you haven't downloaded this cheat sheet yet go ahead and comment cheat sheet in the chat and um and one of our team members i think we have we have everyone today we have rim and uh, and punita and ines but rim will send you guys the the link to download the cheat sheet so just go ahead and comment cheat sheet and then you guys can grab it but here i actually have the steps for you and i'm seeing already uh Iklan, uh, said that you use the z equation great yes that's correct so we're going to use this equation here to solve for that standard unit and then to find the probability we're going to use the table that's on page 76 and then also notations that are on page 67 on the reference and manual okay so so let's go ahead and write the equation down who can tell me go ahead in the meantime guys go ahead and solve for z let me know what you guys found for z okay let me know in the chat uh who solved for z and what value did you get okay so we're gonna have z for the 86 um score it's gonna be x minus the standard deviation over let me just check here make sure right over mu did I get that right, guys? Let me let me take a look one more time to make sure. Okay, x minus mu, I, I flipped it. X minus mu over, sorry about that. Hold on, guys. Give me one minute. I'll just write, rewrite it. So we have x minus mu over the standard deviation. Okay, that seems more correct. Okay, so x is going to be 86, right? That's what we're trying to find, the standard unit for 86. Minus mu, mu is going to be 88. And then we're going to divide it by 1.5 okay um now if you guys plug in these numbers okay awesome tanisha great work ifa we have minus 1.3 we have bar um we have d answered as well great work guys okay so we're gonna have minus 1.3 okay so that's the value it's going to be for z now let's go back here so what i want to do guys let me see if you guys can see it there's a little bit of lag um but i'll give it a minute to see if you guys can can see 
these graphs here um, maybe I'll have to zoom out a little bit okay okay cool I think you guys can see them now so what I'm gonna try to do here and the thing is like on the FE exam you might not have to grab like draw this but sometimes it does really help to just to see it right to see exactly what we're trying to look for okay so and, and it doesn't really take that much time right and you know if you're gonna draw it for like like it's gonna take you 30 seconds but then at the end you're gonna get the correct answer I think that's worth it right so you just gotta figure it out sometimes it's easy the problem is easy and you don't have to really draw it but sometimes it really helps so now we're trying to find the probability that the students will score above minus 1.3 right so now what that means is that we need to find the area under this curve here okay so which means from a negative number to a positive number or to a positive infinity right so from minus x to positive infinity okay D does that make sense for everybody let me know guys in the chat if this makes sense okay now let's go ahead and what i'm gonna do here is uh, take go back to the reference handbook okay and take a look at this table here so let's let's take let's analyze this what's giving to us here what are our options okay what can we use to solve the problem that we have okay so if we take a look at this let's start with this one okay can you guys see my mouse i think you guys can see my mouse so if we take a look at the first graph here from x this here it gives you the values from x to minus infinity okay so this here it can't we, we can't really use it okay now we well so I'll, I'll explain it in a little bit we can use it but but not in the way it's it's giving because because you guys got to remember we are giving we have to find from a negative number to a positive infinity right it doesn't really correspond with this one this one here it goes from a positive number to positive infinity we can't use this one either right we can't use the second one uh, I mean we will be using it if we change it a little bit uh, which I'll show you guys in a little bit but just just uh, follow along for this one here it has to be between two numbers right so this one when it's 2r of x that's when the question asks you need to find the probability uh, below this score and above this score right so then you go you use this this here okay because it's going to be minus x and then above it, and then x to positive infinity now what you guys need to remember for 2r of x and w of x it's very important that the x values are the same okay so if it's if you have minus 2 to 1 you can't really use it okay you can't just go to here and then use minus just use 2 okay that that wouldn't work you have to make sure that it's it's from minus 1 to 1 okay so these are just few things concepts to keep in mind and then also guys there's also a more explanation if we go to page 67 if we go here uh, let's see oh actually that's wrong okay we have to update our cheat sheets but uh, let me see here so if we go to this page here oh no that's actually correct 67 um, so right here they give you guys the definition of when you can use f of x r of x w of x and then f minus x okay um, now let's go back to our uh, graph here and then we can go to to the problem so let's take a look at what we have so we have minus 1.3 to infinity so the way we're gonna solve this right would you guys agree that these two graphs okay let me let me draw it and then I'll explain it to you guys in a little bit so we said here we have zero right and then if we do 1.3 and then if we go like this would you guys agree that the area under these two curves that we have are the same would you guys agree because remember we have symmetry with this bell curve right which means we can play around with it and we can use it to solve even if we don't have exactly what's giving to us on the table on the reference handbook so now as you guys can see if we just go from a positive number to minus infinity right that can these are the same they have the same exact area and this year what we could do is use f of x right which is f of 1.3 and if you guys take a look at the table on the reference handbook f of 1.3 is going to give you guys 0 0.9032 okay and i think some of you guys um 0 0.9032 let's see did, did you guys get that answer so it's going to be zero point so okay so we have joe got it russell got it russell great to see you here um okay awesome guys uh we have few students that 
found that it's 0 0.0918, okay? Now, that answer is actually for if you're looking for the score below 86%, okay? That, if the question asks for the score below 86%, you guys who got 0 0.0918, you will be correct, okay? So just be careful, all right? So here, and I know why you guys used, you guys got that number, 0 0.0918, because you used, um, you did, because you used, let me write it down, you used f of minus x, because it's very important, guys, to understand why you got a question wrong, right? It's, it's key to passing the FE because if you understand why you got it wrong, that means you really understand how to solve the problem and you're gonna do well on your exam because you have that deep understanding of the concepts. So make sure that you guys keep that in mind. So if we go, I showed you guys earlier the definition for F of X, R of X, W of X, right? And then it has, we have F of minus X is the same as one minus F of X. And that's what some of you guys did and that's how you got 0 0.0918, okay? Now, here, even the problem that with that is that we're not trying to look for, um, let me, if we go back to here, so if we use just f of x here, it's going to be 1.3, right, to, inf to, min to minus infinity, and then you guys did 1 minus this area, right? So that's going to give you what you guys found is this area here, right? But we're not trying to solve for this area. We want to find it this area here okay so make sure that you guys get that let me know if you guys have any questions in the in the chat and i'm gonna go ahead and write the answer here so that's gonna be 0 0.9032 okay so this is going to be the answer now can anybody tell me what other method or what's what's the other graph here that we can use to solve for this problem there's actually two ways we can solve for this problem who can tell me what's the second method that we can use to solve for this problem? I'll give you guys a few minutes. I'll give you guys a few minutes to process what we just covered as well. And then we can uh, go ahead and then I'll, I'll show you guys. There's, It's good to know the different ways to solve problem because then on the FE exam, if you get forget one method, you'll, you'll be able to at least remember one of them right and again this helps you also to just see these problems in different ways and then it gives you like these different options you can just because because of the symmetry you can play around with it and be able to solve for the problem in different ways okay this is something to very important for you guys to keep in mind okay so we have ifa we have bara we have um one minus r of x yes guys can you just use R of graph but subtracts one? Yes, Tanisha, that's correct. Okay, awesome, guys. That's exactly what I was going to do here. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, Joe, be careful. So it's not just going to be R of X. It's going to have to be 1 minus R of X, okay? So I'll go over that in a little bit. But great work, guys. A lot of you guys got it. So here we're going to have uh, 0. So again, we're going to start at one uh, minus 1.3. Right, and we're looking for this here, okay? So now what we could do is this. So if we go zero, right? And then we do here, this is 1.3, which means it's gonna give us this area, right? Now, so what some of the students are saying in the comments, guys, is that this here, right? So it's a positive number to infinity, right? So if we go to the reference handbook, which one gives us positive number to positive infinity? That's R of X, right? So if I do here, so this here gives us R of X, right? Now, we, but the problem is, we, I don't want this area. This is not the area that we're looking for, right? We're looking for this area right here, okay? So what we could do, because we said earlier that the total area under this curve is one, to be able to solve for this, what we could do is just one minus R of X. Okay, and so if you guys do that, so R of X is going to be 1.3, and R of 1.3 is equal to 0 0.0968, and if you guys plug in these numbers, you're going to get 0 0.9032, okay, which is the same exact thing as what we found earlier, but using F of X. Okay, guys, does that make sense? Let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. And again, I know some of you guys got the 0 0.0918. If you guys want to try that later, um, solve the exact same problem 
and just the only thing that will be different is that the score will be below right it will be below 86 percent and if you guys do that you guys will actually get the other answer which is 0 0.0968 uh which is let's see which is a okay so a it's for the score below 86 and then here the answer is d for the score above uh 86 percent okay all right um let's see okay cool do we have any questions guys about this so far does does it does all of this make sense um if it does i'm gonna go ahead and and stop um uh, sharing my screen and then i want to share with you guys some tips on um on how to pass your fe exam and you know and then we could just talk about your fe journey and how you can stay focused and um so and then also guys if you have any question about the fe uh please please let me know in in the chat as well i am i am here all week right i'm gonna be doing these lives i'm gonna help you guys solve problems and then also if you guys have any question about your fe exam go ahead and let us know uh, i can answer it i have a whole team here with us today that can help you guys uh with your fe uh now uh, so so okay so we have we have a question from manchi uh manchi i have a question about moment of inertia that i want you to help me okay mostly about dy okay so um manchi we do have few videos on uh the moment of inertia if you are a student go ahead and shoot us an email and we'll be able to help you if you are enrolled in our courses uh but but if if you're not go ahead and check the the videos that we have on moment of inertia and if you still confused about dy go ahead and comment on those videos and then we can be able to answer you okay so um but if you are enrolled in our courses we actually just did a weekly meeting where we talked about dy in three different problems and we, we uploaded that weekly meeting to the course um okay awesome menchi so here's here's what we're gonna do so um go ahead and shoot us an email and then we are gonna send you the link to that weekly meeting where we discuss the differences between all the moment of inertia and we really clarified what's dy right because this that's a great great question guys so moment of inertia is very common on your fe exam okay so you will have at least one problem on your fe on moment of inertia now the thing that makes moment of inertia tricky is that you can you you can get a question on finding the mo moment of inertia about the centroidal axis about the origin right x axis or y axis or about a given axis right they could give you an x axis that is at a certain distance and you have to find the moment of inertia around that axis right and so in that situation in in all those three examples dy changes right and so uh, menchi in that weekly call we actually take the same exact problem we solve it using um having a different axis to find the moment of inertia and then we really talk about the differences between them and then after watching that video i think it's really going to help you but if you're still still confused after you watch that that video please go ahead and shoot us an email and then we can make sure that we clarify all your questions okay uh, we can even have uh punita she can schedule a call with you just to make sure that you you got it okay so and that goes for all of you guys our students please uh reach out if you guys need help with with um anything uh that you, in our courses that you're struggling with okay all right awesome guys um so i'm seeing uh, so we have joe hey Kenza, i just wanted to say thank you for your program i haven't passed it yet failed four times i got your program before my last attempt i can't tell i'm almost there awesome joe that's i'm really happy for you that's really uh exciting uh, i can i can see that you're excited and and here's the thing you know i know that failing the fe exam sometimes it just sucks right especially if you failed it a couple times so if, if you guys failed the fe exam before let, let me know in the chat and you guys will be surprised of how many people have failed this exam so many times um and so and and it's great to see that because you know you're not alone right it's not you the, you're not the only one that failed the fe exam before and just knowing that you're not alone and that many people uh have failed the fe exam before just like you did uh it, it just 
you feel better about it, right? Because then you're not like, what, what, why did I fail so many times? What is wrong with me? I'm the only white. So it's, it's different and it just really helps. So that's the first step, guys, is know that, you know, so many people fail this exam a couple times before they pass it. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? So then the next step is just making sure that you guys have a plan, have a good study material and try to just show up and stay consistent. That's, I think, when, once you have a good study material, this, the second battle is, is just the, the motivation and the consistency and the mindset, right? And so that's why we try to do as many videos here on YouTube just to motivate you guys. We try to do interviews uh, so that way you can see other people that are maybe in a similar situation as as you are right now and you can see that they pass and they made it and that I'm hoping that is inspiring you guys and giving you motivation to not give up and to keep going because I truly believe that all of you guys can pass your FE exam right uh, but but I also understand that is a tough journey right it's it's not easy and it can be difficult and it can be especially because you know, when we were in college, we had classmates, we had friends, we would go to the library, study together, right? But now, once you graduate, you're on your own. So it's like people around you after work, they might not do nothing. They might go to the gym, chill, relax, right? But then you have to study, right? And so that feels sometimes lonely. And so that's why we try to do as, as many things as we can to support you guys in the journey, to make it easier, to, to, so that you're not alone in this journey and you are able to succeed as well, right? Because that's the goal. At the end, we want you guys to pass your FE exam faster, right? So many of you guys have been in this journey for years and you've been stuck and we need to change that. You guys don't need to stay, you know, fail the FE exam four or five times. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, but, you know, if we can avoid it, that would be great, right? Because, you know, if you fail once, twice, that's fine. But then when you start failing after six, seven, eight, it starts to really affect your self-esteem, right? And so we want to minimize that as much as we can and push you guys to do the best you can to keep showing up, to stay consistent, to study, to learn the material, also to enjoy the journey, right? And to not leave you yourself to burnout. It's very important to have a balance as well. Work out, spend time with family. Those things are important to your health, to your memory, to your brain. It will help you retain information. It will help you process it better and faster right? So these are all important things to keep in mind, guys, okay? All right, uh, let's see. We have Joe, 37 years old, no college degree. I'm a technician who will get a huge raise and become a civil once I pass. That's awesome, Joe. Go for it. That's, that sounds amazing. And and by the way, I've had a student before who doesn't have an engineering degree um, and, and, and they passed their FE. So um, I, I know you. it can be done. I've seen it once or twice. Um, so go for it. Uh, keep keep going all right okay we have Eva is this video already posted since I missed the last meeting uh, Eva so it is already on there so for for the I think we're talking about the moment of inertia so the weekly meeting where we discuss the moment of inertia it's already on there and it is going to be um, under static so if you go to statics you will see the, the, that call okay and and please reach out to us if you have any other questions okay all right, um, let's see. Do we have any other comments? Uh, Chris, Crystal, don't give up. Yes, guys, keep going. VT failed four times. It's okay, right? It, that's not, it doesn't matter because once you pass, nobody will ask you how many times you failed before you pass it, right? So it's all about that de dedication. Um, you know, it's about getting up again and trying again the next day. And I know some of you guys, um, it can be difficult to do that, right? It's, again, like I said, after failing so many times, it just becomes harder and harder for you to show up and to keep studying and you start losing hope. But it's very important, guys, to try to look at the last attempt that you took the FE and try to learn from, from it, okay? Look at it from a positive um, perspective, okay? Don't look at it from um, a way of judging right uh or like beating yourself up for failing a couple times or disappointment we don't want any of that because that's just gonna affect you mentally and you're not gonna be at your best right because we this exam is tricky and you gotta be at your best in everything your study material your mental your mindset uh right your confidence all of that right so that you do really well on your exam and so it's very important that you guys you know when you look back just look back and be like okay 
what did I do wrong, right? And just be brutally honest with yourself. What if I could have done better or what I could have done differently, right? And then and just look at it from that perspective and then come up with a new study plan and just keep showing up and, and try to be in the moment, okay? Don't dwell in the past, okay? It's over, it's done. You took it, you failed, that's it, right? You can't, you can't do anything about it. It's out of your control. Same thing with the future. Don't try to every single day to remind yourself, I have to pass this exam. That's a lot of pressure to live with, right? That's, that's a lot of stress to, to have that every day, right? Right now, just forget about that goal, right? And just the goal should be what am I, what do I need to study today? And I want to make that happen. That should be your goal, right? You should have, that's why I tell you guys have to-do lists, right? If you have a to-do list every day, then it's easier for you guys to be in the moment because then you're going to show up and you're going to be like, okay, today I just have to do these math problems. That's it. You're not thinking about the past. You're not thinking about the future. And that's why having a process in place, is going to help you guys with motivation and with, with your, process of studying learning you don't have to rely on willpower anymore right because you're just gonna show up and then just do what you gotta do to learn the material okay guys so these are very important things that can help you guys um with with your your studying with your approach when it comes to the fe and all that all right we have lewis how can i have the reference handbook lewis go ahead and go to the ncs website you have to sign up with them once you sign up and you log in then you can easily download it you can also check out our video that we posted yesterday uh, where i show you actually on that video i show you how to download the reference handbook okay and if you have any questions you can leave it in the comment section and we'll get back to you we have Tina. I failed last time. It was the first time. If I emailed the report, can you evaluate for me, please? Yes, Tina. For all of you guys, if you have failed the FE exam before, so for our students, if you have failed and um, and we already looked at it, you don't need to send uh, your diagnostic report again. But any of all of you guys, if you have failed your FE exam before and you want somebody to look at it, please feel free to share it with us. Send it to our email. Uh, we can. Um, Punita will send you guys the email and. Um, and then we can go ahead and evaluate it and take a look at it, okay? So we, I get so many of these diagnostic reports every day. We get them. So I, I have an idea, like a lot of times, even my team now, they look at a diagnostic report and we can tell if this student is really close to passing or they're a little bit far. And we can also give you an advice of what to do, the study plan. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, if you're close, uh, close to passing, we're hoping that like two months, three months should be enough to get you, to get you ready to pass your FE because really guys the goal here is we want students to start studying after three four months you're ready to pass your FE exam right when I was preparing for my FE I remember like I kept pushing my exam days over and over because I just I never felt ready I always felt scattered my study material was everywhere I was afraid to miss anything um, I, I wasn't sure what I was studying, if it was going to be on my exam. I was constantly looking at the specifications, looking up stuff on Google, YouTube. My, I had so, so much engineering books on, on, on my desk. That's what I used to prepare for my FE. And, and I just I had to just keep studying and pushing it. And it was very stressful. And I'm hoping that what, what we're doing is, is helping you guys to have a less stressful journey, less overwhelming, so that way you guys can enjoy the process and, and which can help you guys to learn better, learn faster, process the information more, and most importantly, retain it for your FE, right? Because there's 14 different subjects that you have to remember. And if you don't have a good grasp of the concepts and if you're studying with all the stress and feeling scattered, that's not really going to help you uh, with retaining the information, right? So we're trying to give you guys as much information as we can uh, so that to make the whole process easier for you guys and hopefully once we're done with the FE we can do the same thing with the PE so for those of you guys who pass your FE um, we'll have something ready for you guys as well for for the PE and then hopefully we can help you guys you know excel in your career under less than one year right we had the student Malik who felt I, I love Malik's story because it's just it's very inspiring and it can show uh, what what anyone can do and that's why i really like his story but he graduated in 2012 he failed the fe exam six times um and then he enrolled in our program and five months later he passed his fe two months later he got his pe on his first try 
and then five months later he also got his se i mean the things that he accomplished in like a year and a half was incredible he excelled in his career faster than he ever thought he could uh and you know and now he's getting all the raises and the promotion and so that's really the goal you know when i was working in the engineering industry i felt like i was really stuck limited uh you couldn't really uh, excel in your career um in in many different ways and so i i felt i feel like if we can make that whole process easier so that engineers can start excelling in their careers faster right we don't have to um, have 10 years of experience uh, or, or 15 years of experience before we can get into the management role and and have that raise or that promotion right so I'm hoping that when engineers you know graduate within one to two years they can get their FE get their PE and then from there they can just go and have a good good job and excel in their career so that's really the goal here uh, so I'm hoping a lot of this stuff it's resonating with you guys today and I'm hoping um, it motivates you guys to to start this year with a good study plan good study material have some uh, channels that you can watch there's so many podcasts uh, YouTube videos that you can watch for motivation uh, you can have a study buddy uh, if you're one of our students make sure you get on discord okay discord and then you can engage talk to other students that are in the same situation as you you guys talk to each other support each other help each other um, and then you can always reach out to us we are here to help you guys okay all right let's see here um uh let's see so uh, we, we have did i answer everybody's question uh if you guys if i missed anybody's question please let me know in the chat uh, i know uh, my team is is answering some of the questions as well which is awesome thank you guys for 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 helping our students um okay so let's see do we have any other questions okay we have jimmy he commented felt five times really didn't study thanks for this session i look forward to study to pass this year awesome jimmy that's great all right guys uh that's it for today's video that's it for today's live um if you guys have any questions or if you would like to send us your diagnostic report uh feel free to to do that our email is hello at engineer.com i think uh one of our my team members already sent you guys that in the chat um monica go ahead and and send us an email and wim will help set up that for you okay so again guys if you need help with anything discord uh, make sure that you guys reach out to our team and we can help you with that all right um happy new year guys um really gl glad to see you. a lot of you guys join me here today i hope to see a lot of you guys again tomorrow uh remember this i'm hoping this week to give you that motivation so that you can have a, a good start of the year okay and and again be in the moment enjoy guys enjoy learning engineering it's really fun once you start understanding it and you get into it it's really fun okay so make sure that you guys do that don't dwell in the past or in the future just just enjoy the process right now and i promise you if you understand the concepts if you enjoy the process and if you are learning and you know how to do the problems on your own you will pass your fe exam just don't rush it just you know have have a good healthy life balance as well make sure that you guys take some time to 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 recharge spend time with family exercising is very important for your mental make sure that you guys do all that and you will pass your fe exam all right guys and as always if you guys need help with anything please feel free to reach out or let us know in the comments and i hope you guys have a great productive day i know a lot of you guys are not working today so maybe you can put in a little bit more extra hours of studying um and um yeah and I, and I hope to see you guys tomorrow thank you guys so much for being here bye guys thank you guys thank you amaral